um, about April 2022, I uh, put the engine into the Gilbin. This is the uh, uh, Jaguar S-Type um, AJ30 engine based on the Ford Eurotech V6 connected to the Mazda RX-8 six-speed gearbox. It was installed into the car um, in April last year and it's now just over a year later so this is now late June 23 and the time has come to take it out again to finalise all the uh, installation the bits around the bulkhead including um, a uh, alteration to the steering shaft, exhaust manifolds, um, wiring, brake pipes and various other bits. So now it has to come out. So one of the things I had to do was to refer back to the last video which I shot of me putting the engine in, which I managed to do um, with, in one piece and uh, without taking a steering rack out um, and it requires me to jiggle around the weight of the engine on the uh, lifting hook that I've got here. So um, that's what I'm going to do now, is to take the thing out again. This could take me some time. And actually, um, I have a, built a little a little trolley here, which I used um, some scrap bits of um, uh, scaffold board, I think they are, um, which I had used for something else, but now repurposing for this, plus some casters that I had. And I can't remember why I've got those casters, but uh, anyway, they're now part of my new little trolley thing. Which should make it a lot easier to move the uh, uh, the engine box arrangement around the garage, rather than using um, dollies, which really use for um, moving the car itself around. Those things. That's what I used previously, but they're quite good or much better being used for moving the car. It's been such a long time since I've been doing anything in the engine bay, I've kind of forgotten how to hoist the engine up. It, the engine is currently kind of wedged in there. Um, and uh, the problem is my chain hoist is kind of fixed to the ceiling. Um, it's a lot more compact than using a hydraulic crane, to be honest. Quite, I'm really quite pleased with this thing. But of course it's fixed. That's the disadvantage. So. Yeah, obvious really, since I actually had these things, I've put the uh, front of the front wheels on, um, what are these things, dollies, skates as I tend to call them, and that means I can move the car from side to side, really quite easily, and front to back. So anyway, uh, yeah, so it means I can get the bonnet up, and uh, attach the engine hoist. For those of you uh, who set about taking engines out of cars, I mean I have, as I've got luxury, um, excuse the Yorkshire accent impression attempt just then, I have actually got this uh, hydraulic uh, engine crane on wheels and um, so yeah I, I have options as it were, um, but those things probably cost about I don't know, 150 quid upwards. Um, I don't know how much, I can't remember how much that one cost. It was many years old. But uh, anyway, these things, made in China as they, as they are, readily available on uh, eBay, of course. Chain hoist with welded links on the, uh, um, on the chain itself. And, uh, yeah, really quite... Uh, Pleasing. I attached that kind of sack to the underneath of it because the chain that gets let go when you wind it down has to go somewhere and that catches the chain and then a small chain attaches to the side. So now I've got to um, distinguish, distinguished by having smaller links than the main lifting chain. This goes round and round. I imagine it has some kind of um, helical screw thing in there. I've never taken it apart so I'm not sure. You know, it's quite noisy. Let's see if I can put that somewhere else. Is it going to run out of 
This uh, piece of this piece of old seat belt is what I actually use to strap around the engine itself. There's no lifting um, eyes on the engine at the moment, so that simply goes all the way around the bottom of the engine at the other side. There we go. So. Did I ever mention that the AJ30 is a very tight fit in here? Um, so far I've taken all these bits off the engine, including the alternator, the uh, engine mountings, the exhaust manifolds, um, and inside the car I've removed the top of the tunnel, and the gearbox has now eventually flopped down onto the ground, which is what I wanted. I've realised that some of the uh, things I've just had to do could be, as it were, productionised, i.e. made easier to do in the future. Especially the gearbox mounting, actually. That's one thing. Um, also the alternator mounting, which originally was only ever temporary, as I remember, but such a long time ago now. Uh, and various things like that. So, anyway, that is uh, slightly downstream after I've got the engine out. So here we have the engine just beginning to emerge. Just beginning to. It's facing quite a long way downhill. And that, the gearbox must be nearly touching the ground, I think. If it isn't actually touching the ground. Yes, it actually is touching the ground. So um, the engine needs to come up, and as it comes, having referred to my previous video, uh, it has to come up, and as it comes up, the back has to continue going down. I don't know how far I'll get with this tonight, but I might get a little bit further than where I am at the moment. Ratchet tuck strap tie down thing, looped it round the back of the gearbox. I just need to tip the thing up so that the car can roll out from underneath. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, get in there and see if that can go the rest of the way. Well, the um, battery on the camera, unfortunately, went just at the final moment of removing the engine from the... But, out it came. And the use of the extra ratchet strap, which is still hanging up there, actually. And the twisting method, twisting the, the strap round and round to uh, shorten it, um, did the job. And I was able to wheel the car out from under the engine and lower it to the floor onto my new trolley that I've made. So what I need to do now is finish up all the details. <laughs> 